Peace be with you. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Jesus via Mary. The best, surest, and the quickest way to the sacred heart of Jesus is through his mother, the Blessed Virgin, the Immaculate Conception. She's our mother too. Mary, our mother. Let's begin with a prayer. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that any one who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, Despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. Well, Easter is over, brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed the Triduum devotions and celebrations. The weather on Easter Sunday was just fine, and all of the Easter flowers are still in bloom. Yes, Easter's over. But is it? Is Easter ever really over? Consider this. Jesus began his passion with a Passover celebration, the Seder meal, in the upper room on the first Holy Thursday night, the same meal that the Israelites celebrated just before being released from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. After the firstborn of the Egyptians, both man and beast, were destroyed by the angel of death. The Israelites suffered no death that night as long as they spread the blood of the Lamb, their sacrifice, their communion meal, in communion with all the other Israelites, on the lintel and the doorposts of their homes, using a hyssop branch. Jesus, the firstborn, the firstborn of God, suffered and died horribly on the cross. He was our sacrifice our sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. He redeemed mankind and freed us from our slavery to sin, original sin. He reopened the gates of heaven. His blood was on the holy cross, on the lintel of the cross beam, and on the doorpost of the vertical beam. He died so that we may not die. On the Holy Cross, after saying, I thirst, Jesus sipped sour wine which a soldier gave him in a sponge on a hyssop branch. This was the fourth and final cup of his Last Supper's Passover meal, and it was the consummation of the New Covenant. After tasting the wine while on the cross, Jesus said, It is consummated. Just before ascending to heaven, Jesus gave us his church with Peter as the first pope to teach us and guide us through the power of the Holy Spirit. He gave us the sacraments to wash and strengthen us, gave us his beloved mother to be our mother and our advocate and mediatrix with him. And above all, he left us himself, truly present here on earth, body, blood, soul, and divinity, the risen, living, divine Christ in the Holy Eucharist, the Holy Sacrament of the Altar, so that we may constantly partake of the continuing celebration in communion with his entire church of his sacrifice for us, so that we may consume his flesh and blood Earthly food becomes a part of us, and in a sense, we of it. In consuming the Eucharist, Jesus becomes ever more a part of us, and we of him. Why did Jesus leave us such a bountiful legacy? Because due to our fallen nature, the residual effect of original sin, he knew full well that we would continue to fall, to sin, as a result of our weakness. Why should Jesus save us and suffer so much in the process only to have us go to hell anyway 
as a result of subsequent sins. His church provides us ample means and opportunity to confess our sins, and through His divine mercy, to be forgiven. Participating in these gifts of Christ's legacy is our means of making it through the desert of life on earth, and ultimately reaching the promised land, paradise, the land of milk and honey. We, each of us, will have crosses to carry. We'll feel scourged at times, beaten down. We'll have thorns to impede us. We'll fall, often. But if we rise again and receive help with our cross from Blessed Mother and from the Church established by Christ, the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, we can reach the top of that mountain, and after our journey is ended, we can look forward to rising again with Christ in glory. Easter, then, is not over and never will be until the end of time. Jesus will always be with us, available to us, personally, through his precious body and blood, through his divine mercy. And on that note, I guess we should start talking about divine mercy, because in just a few days, this coming Sunday, is Divine Mercy Sunday. And as Catholics, the most important thing we can do between now and then is get to confession, because Having gone to confession and being in the state of grace, if we receive communion on Divine Mercy Sunday while attending Mass, not only will all of our sins have been forgiven, but all of the punishment due to those sins will be forgiven. This is awesome, and it only happens once a year. Now, this is different from a plenary indulgence, and I'm not going to go into that, that's for another time. I'm going to start talking about the Divine Mercy message, and if you would like to go online and get some information for yourself regarding this message, just go to thedivinemercy.org. Thedivinemercy.org. Everything you need to know is in there. But in the meantime, here's a recap. Through Sister Faustina, who's now a saint, the merciful Savior has given the aching world new channels for the outpouring of His grace. These new channels include the image of the Divine Mercy, the Feast of Mercy, in other words, Divine Mercy Sunday, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Novena to the Divine Mercy, and last but certainly not least, the prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, which is the Hour of Mercy. Although these means of receiving God's mercy are new in form, they all proclaim the timeless message of God's merciful love. They also draw us back to the great sacrament of mercy, the Holy Eucharist, where the living Lord, the living Lord, who suffered and died on the cross, and whose heart was pierced with a lance, pours forth his mercy on all mankind, and grants pardon to all who draw near and honor him. As Jesus said to St. Faustina, My heart overflows with great mercy for souls, and especially for poor sinners. It is for them that the blood and water flowed from my heart, as from a fount overflowing with mercy. For them I dwell in the tabernacle as king of mercy. The message of the divine mercy that Sister Faustina received from the Lord was not only directed toward her personal growth, but in faith toward the good of all people. With the command of our Lord to paint an image according to the pattern that Sister Faustina had seen, came also a request to have this image venerated, first in the Sister's Chapel and then throughout the whole world. The same is true with the revelations of the chaplet. The Lord requested that this chaplet be said not only by his sister, but by others. Encourage souls, he said, to say this chaplet that I have given you. This, by the way, brothers and sisters, is a great prayer to say at the Divine Mercy Hour of 3 o'clock, 
the hour of mercy. The same is true of the revelation of the Feast of Mercy. Our Lord said, The Feast of Mercy emerged from my very depths of tenderness. It is my desire that it solemnly be celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. Mankind will not have peace until it turns to the fount of my mercy. Now, Jesus also re reveals God as his merciful Father. The Old Testament speaks frequently and with great tenderness about God's mercy. Yet it was Jesus who, through his words and actions, revealed to us in an extraordinary way God as a loving Father, rich in mercy and abounding in great kindness and love. In Jesus' merciful love and care for the poor, the oppressed, the sick, and the sinful, and especially in his freely choosing to take upon himself the punishment for our sins, and through a horrible death doing it on the cross, so that all may be freed from destructive consequences and death, he manifested in a great way God's love and mercy for humanity. The message of God's love and mercy is especially made known by the Gospels. The good news revealed through Jesus is that God's love for each person knows no bounds, and no sin or infidelity, no matter how horrible, will separate us from God and His love if and when we turn to Him in confidence and seek His mercy. God's will is our salvation. He has done everything on our behalf. But since he made us free, has given us a free will, he invites us to choose him and partake of his divine life. We become partakers of his divine life when we believe in his revealed truth and trust him, when we love him and remain true to his word, when we honor him and seek his kingdom, when we receive him in communion and turn away from sin, when we are mutually caring and forgiving. What is Divine Mercy Sunday? Among all the elements of devotion to the Divine Mercy requested by our Lord through St. Faustina, the Feast of Mercy holds first place. The Lord's will with regard to its establishment was already made known in His first revelation to the saint, as recorded in her diary. Altogether there were fourteen revelations concerning the desired feast. Our Lord's explicit desire is that this feast be celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. This Sunday is now designated Divine Mercy Sunday. Pope John Paul II made the surprise announcement of this change in his homily at the canonization ceremony for St. Faustina back on April 30th in the year 2000. He declared, it is important, then, that we accept the whole message that comes to us from the Word of God on this second Sunday of Easter, which from now on throughout the Church will be called Divine Mercy Sunday. During his homily, John Paul also made clear that the image of the Divine Mercy that St. Faustina saw, which is, it is to be venerated on Divine Mercy Sunday, and it represents the risen Christ bringing mercy to the world. Pope John Paul II said, Jesus shows his hands and his side to the apostles. He points, that is, to the wounds of the passion, especially the wound in his heart, the source from which flows the great wave of mercy poured out on humanity. From that heart we see two rays of light shining from the heart and illuminating the world. The two rays, Jesus himself explained, represent blood and water. Blood and water, we immediately think of the testimony given by the evangelist John, who, when a soldier on Calvary pierced Jesus' side with his spear, John sees blood and water flowing from it. Moreover, if the blood recalls the sacrifice of the cross and the gift of the Eucharist, the water, in St. John's symbolism, represents not only baptism, but also the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Divine Mercy Sunday is not an optional title for this solemnity. Rather, Divine Mercy is the integral name for this feast day. At this time, the Church recognizes Sister Maria Faustina not only as a saint, but as one of the most outstanding mystics in the history of the Church. Jesus said to her, Today I am sending you with my mercy to the people of the whole world. I do not want to punish aching mankind, but I desire to heal it. Present it to my merciful heart. You are the secretary of my mercy. I have chosen you for that office in this and the next life, to make known to souls the great mercy that I have for them, and to exhort them to trust in the bottomless depth of my mercy. The Divine Mercy devotion is simple, but rich in meaning, and full of Christ's promises. The Divine Mercy image, well, shows the risen Savior with lights coming from his heart. This is presumably how he appeared to the apostles when they were locked in the upper room on Easter Sunday night. The pale rays stand for the water which makes souls righteous. The red ray stands for the blood which is the life of souls. Happy is the one who will dwell in their shelter. The Feast of Mercy Jesus requested this feast to be celebrated on the Sunday after Easter as a time of mercy for all people. He said, On this day the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. Let no soul fear to draw nearer to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. The Divine Mercy Chaplet Jesus himself dictated these prayers to St. Faustina. It is a prayer of atonement and appeasement of God's wrath. Jesus said, By saying the chaplet, you are bringing humankind closer to me. The souls that say this chaplet will be embraced by my mercy during their lifetime, and especially at the hour of their death. The Hour of Mercy Jesus asked that we commemorate the hour of his death each day, each and every day. And this is the hour between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. As often, he said, as you hear the clock strike the third hour, immerse yourself completely in my mercy, adoring and glorifying it. Invoke its omnipotence for the whole world, and particularly for poor sinners. For at that moment, mercy was opened wide for every soul. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to digress just a little bit at this time for a few moments. If someone can't make it to Mass on Divine Mercy Sunday, usually the parish will arrange for a Eucharistic minister, or an extraordinary minister of the Eucharist, I should say, to bring communion to that person at home. Uh, having received communion in that way, and perhaps even watching Mass on the EWTN channel, uh, I'm sure our Lord would take this into consideration as far as the promises that he has made relative to Divine Mercy Sunday. For other folks who are not able to get the Eucharist or to get to Mass, usually an act of spiritual communion well, it's not the same as receiving the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, but it's the next best thing. And I'm going to read you now an act of spiritual communion. By the way, if you'd like to get a copy of this, just send an email to us. Our email address is to Jesus via Mary at AOL.com. Two is T O, Jesus via V I A, Mary at AOL.com and on the subject line put spiritual communion and we'll send a copy right back to you. This is the prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you were here already. I embrace you and unite myself to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. On Divine Mercy Sunday, there are a lot of celebrations, some of which take place in the afternoon. Uh, Our Lady of Chestahova, the shrine in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, has ceremonies, mass, communion, probably even confessions, beginning around 2.30 in the afternoon. So you might keep that in mind. And if you're interested, go online to check it out. There's something else that's very special I want to share with you. And it begins on... Divine Mercy Sunday. The Historic Church of the Sacred Heart of Jesus at 3rd and Reed Streets in Philadelphia, that's South Philadelphia, they're having a personal renewal parish mission through the heart of Jesus, and it begins on Divine Mercy Sunday night. It runs for four nights in a row, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 7 p.m. each night. And The encounter with the heart of Jesus will be through the ministry of Father Bill Gaffney. He's a very holy man. I suggest and I strongly recommend that you attend this mission. It begins on the night of Divine Mercy Sunday, 7 p.m. at the Historic Church of the Sacred Heart of Jesus at 3rd and Reed Streets in South Philadelphia. If you have any questions or need more information, please call the Parish office at 215-465-4050 or 4051. You can ask for Father Jim Otto, O-T-T-O. Father Jim is the pastor there. And the numbers again are 215-465-4050 or 4051. I'm going to share with you now some thoughts on the Divine Mercy Novena, my friends. A Novena, as you know, is nine days of prayer. And the Divine Mercy Novena is said every day of the year by various prayer groups. The Divine Mercy Novena that ends for Divine Mercy Sunday is especially powerful, however, because, as our Lord said, it is available in abundance, meaning the power, to everyone, if only we would embrace it. He said further, Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. In her diary, Jesus told Sister Faustina, I desire that during these nine days you bring souls to the fountain of my mercy, that from there they may draw strength and refreshment and whatever grace they need in the hardships of life, and especially at the hour of death. By this novena of chaplets, Divine Mercy chaplets, by this novena I will grant every possible grace to souls. He further said, On each day of the novena you will bring to my heart a different group of souls, and you will immerse them in this ocean of my mercy. On each day you will beg my Father, on the strength of my passion, for graces for these souls. Now here comes a blockbuster. Our Lord talking to uh, Sister Faustina at that time, Saint Faustina, saved for the ninth day, the last day of the novena, prayers for the lukewarm. And I know what lukewarm is because many years ago I was there myself and I'm just so grateful that Our Lady brought me back. But here's what Our Lord said about the lukewarm. These souls wound my heart most painfully. My soul suffered the most dreadful loathing in the Garden of Olives because of lukewarm souls. They were the reason I cried out, Father, take this cup away from me, if it be your will. For them, the last hope of salvation is to flee to my mercy. 
We haven't touched yet, brothers and sisters, on the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and one of the reasons for that is that shortly after our program ends on this same radio station, each day at 3 o'clock the Divine Mercy Chaplet is prayed, so you can tune in to that, and all you need is your rosary beads. Regular rosary beads is how you would the uh, sacramental that you use to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. I'll do a little recap here quickly, though, because some of you may be listening to us on Facebook, and you may not be able to tune into the station. I'm going to have to assume that you're uh, either familiar with these prayers or that you're Catholic and you've been praying them for many years, because I'm not going to say the prayers, just tell you which ones are involved. To say the chaplet, first of all, you make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. There's optional opening prayers. I'm not going to touch that right now. You pray the Our Father, one of them. You pray one Hail Mary. And then you pray the Apostles' Creed. On the Our Father beads of the rosary, you say, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And then on the small beads of each decade, you say, For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Ten times. And then back to the Our Father bead again. At the end, we say, Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. You say that three times. And then there are also optional closing prayers. I'm sorry to do that so quickly, but time is running out, and I just wanted to get that in. Here's what our Lord said about praying the chaplet to Sister Faustina. Encourage souls to say the chaplet which I have given you. Whoever will recite it will receive great mercy at the hour of death. When they say this chaplet in the presence of the dying, I will stand between my father and the dying person, not as the just judge, but as the merciful Savior. Priests will recommend it to sinners as their last hope of salvation. Even if there were a sinner most hardened, if he were to recite this chaplet only once, he would receive grace from my infinite mercy. I desire to grant unimaginable graces to those souls who trust in my mercy. Through the chaplet you will obtain everything if what you ask for is compatible with my will. The novena that we talked about, the Divine Mercy Novena, consists of prayers and the Divine Mercy Chaplet for each of nine days. All of this entire devotion, once again, is available and very well explained by the, uh, the good folks at the website, thedivinemercy.org. Please go there and check it out. But above all, get to confession, be in the state of grace, and go to communion this Sunday because you don't want to miss this golden opportunity that has been given to us directly from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He doesn't give, this is not a game. He wants us. He loves us. And we have to take advantage of the gifts that he gives us. I'm going to close with a little prayer here that our Lord asked we pray with him. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat to the same rhythm. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be in unison. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances melt in one another. And may our lips beg our Heavenly Father together to obtain mercy. Our next program will be in May. We'll be talking to you once again, again about the first Saturday devotion to Our Lady. And during the month of May, which is her month, we'll be talking very much about Our Mother, the Blessed Virgin, the Immaculate Conception. We're about out of time now, my friends, so be sure to tune in next week. Same time, same station. Remember, we want to be with you. You all take care now. And God bless.